Divine Truth Feedback Jesus, Mary and others give personal or group feedback to people who have asked for personal assistance. Jesus and Mary give personal feedback to Hanan Balala on the subject of assessing personal spiritual condition and progression. This session was recorded on the 17th of November 2015 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hi everyone, <laughs> I'm here with Jesus and we're filming some personal feedback sessions this afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> Our next one is in response to a forum post that was addressed to Jesus and I from a lady called Hanan. So I'll read out her post mm -hmm. and we'll have a discussion. No worries. <laughs> Okay. She says, Dear Jesus and Mary, mm -hmm. in a recent video you stated that those of us watching Divine Truth videos from overseas are selective in our participation and perhaps less in progression than those participating in Australia. Mm -hmm. Given our removed position, mm -hmm. how can I better participate and engage in Divine Truth, albeit from overseas? Mm -hmm. Also, most of the time I have no idea what my condition is. <laughs> that is, am I in a facade? Am I deluded in whatever progress I feel I have made? Yep. Are the challenges in my life an indication that I am out of harmony, with love she means, mm. or instances of spirit attack? Mm. I feel I have both been overcloaked and allowed spirit influence at different times in my life, mm -hmm. perhaps all my life. Is there a way I can more accurately assess myself on all of the above and keep myself on track? Sorry, I've just got to turn the page. Yeah. Um, sincerely, Hanan. Right. Okay. Well, so, again, I feel we probably should dissect the email yeah, a little just to give uh, Hanan, what is it? I, I say it Hanan, that's Hanan. how we said it in Lebanon that right. name. So Hanan, Hanan again, I'm Hanan. sorry if I'm yeah. pronouncing Hanan. it wrong for where you're from. If we give Hanan some feedback about the uh, actual situation that she's raised and, mm -hmm. and the email itself, um, that might help her work, you know, work through some issues that she's raised here. Yeah. yeah, okay. So in a recent video, you stated that those of us watching Divine Truth videos from overseas are selective in our participation. Yeah. Before and you go further, can, can I go back to the in, to what you believe this subject's about? Just for my own benefit. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> assessing spiritual condition and personal progression. Okay, that's yeah. right. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. Good. Um, so we're talking here to Hanan about how do you go about accessing your personal condition? Yep. And how do you go about <laughs> Dis discerning your personal progression in love. Yeah, finding out how progressed you are yeah. and where you are in your own progression. Yeah. 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 So, so, so I wanted to say that because it, other, it gives the people who are listening in, sure. immediately some summary so. of what of what we're going to be sharing in this particular discussion. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Mm. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So, Hanan, re re um, she references a recent video that we did yes. in which we talked about people from overseas. Yes. And she actually, some of these statements I don't quite agree with because I know what we said, so I'll just exactly. read it and We've correct got to be some careful. of things here. Sometimes we make general comments yep. about people yep. and, and they don't apply obviously to everyone. No. <laughs> they're, they're generalizations. Yep. Yep. And the problem with generalizations sometimes is that the people who are sincere think it applies to them yeah. when it doesn't and yeah. the people who are insincere think it, think doesn't, it doesn't apply to them when it does yes. <laughs> unfortunately yeah. and that's why a lot of the times we prefer to not m make, make general, general comments, comments but rather be very specific um, yeah. because it helps people work through the actual issues yeah. yeah okay so let's go back to Hanan's note yes in a recent video, you stated that those of us watching Divine Truth videos from overseas are selective in our participation and perhaps less in progression than those participating in Australia. Now, we now, didn't actually, say they were selective in their participation. No. No. We said they were selective in what they apply yes. to themselves from what we teach, Correct. which is actually different from participation. Correct. We're saying they hear all the things we're talking about Divine Truth and they cherry pick. They say, that bit applies to me. That's that nothing to do with me. me. This bit applies to me. That's nothing to do with me. Correct. And, and quite frequently, they apply the things that have yes. no application and, and don't apply the things that have full application. Yes, just as you said <laughs> earlier. Yeah. And Hanan says, and we said that they're perhaps less in progression than those participating in Australia. Yes, and we said that they were less in progression because they're not 
they see the people in Australia have received direct feedback about their personal situations for many, many years from us. Mm -hmm. Now, the people overseas generally don't get to see us personally very frequently. And so their personal situation is not applied very frequently. There's not a set. There's not a, well. and, yeah. and there's not constant feedback about it from us because we're not having constant interactions. But also many people overseas do not have the desire to receive this constant feedback either. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, this is something that we notice when we do have trips overseas. Of the many hundreds of people who could come to an event, mm -hmm. very few actually come. Yeah. And, and the reason for this is that very, very many of them are afraid to actually personally engage the process mm -hmm. with us personally because they're afraid of what they're going to hear from us. And that's the reason why many of them don't come. And also many of them don't come because they're so engaged in their personal life that when an important divine truth event occurs, they don't feel that it's important. They feel that they can skip over it or avoid it or just see it on the telly later yes, right? exactly. and not have the personal engagement. Yeah. And these are all indications that there is not a true sincere desire mm -hmm. to actually develop their relationship with God first in their life. Yeah. And then a true sincere desire to develop the relationship with themselves and the other half of themselves next in their life. Yeah. They have a desire to get many of their addictions met continually mm -hmm. and to avoid the process of even realizing what most of those addictions are, mm -hmm. which is a process that we're trying to encourage. They also get to avoid their sin. Mm. They get to avoid the recognition and the awareness of their own sin. So, so there, is many way, there are many ways mm -hmm. in which the person overseas generally is not fully engaging the process of learning about divine truth. And all that being said, mm -hmm. that's not to say that the people in Australia who have received a lot of personal <laughs> feedback about their condition have actually come Done to recognition <laughs> of their sin or have put their relationship with God first. Yes, however, a lot of the time, however, sorry, yep. majority of them are not angry when they receive feedback. No. Whereas the majority of people overseas when they receive feedback do get very angry. Which does indicate a difference in, in condition. In condition, yes. correct. So yeah. the people in Australia who we give feedback at least want to have some of that feedback generally. Yeah. And yeah. generally they don't get extremely rageful with us about the feedback yeah. and, uh, and go off on all sorts of tangents. Whereas many people overseas, we only have to give them one, one. piece of feedback. One piece of feedback. Even, if, even privately rather than publicly. Yeah. And they're wham, they're off and they're yeah. in a rage with us for many years sometimes mm -hmm. as a result. Yeah. Which yeah. is an indication of the level of addiction. Yeah. 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 They are not allowing the challenge of their addiction to occur. So they're not even going to ever become aware of their sin mm -hmm. under those circumstances. Mm -hmm. They fully believe they're sinless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is a big problem. It's a big problem. You're never going to get it one we got if you already think you're sinless when you're not. <laughs> yes. Yep. So Hanan asks, given our removed position, mm -hmm. being overseas. I would dispute even the word, the use of that word, but go yeah. on. How can I better participate and engage in divine truth, albeit from overseas? Yeah. So let's talk at this conce concept of removed position. Mm -hmm. You are not, if you're overseas, you are not in a removed position. You need to develop a sensitivity that what are the things we're talking about generally with other people probably all also or many times also applies to yourself. Mm. But we have to, they, there needs to be developed this discernment, doesn't there, of, of how it applies. Of course, yeah. of course. And, and many people, like we say, the people overseas do, often do not have the benefit mm -hmm. of our face-to-face -face interaction to tell them, actually, you're completely misapplying our words here, mm -hmm. or you're completely misapplying it to a situation that you believe is personally your truth, but it's not God's truth about you. Mm -hmm. yeah. In other words, you believe things about yourself that are not true from yeah. God's perspective, yeah. and you accept things that are true that are not true. Yeah. So, so there's a sort of problem there. The second thing is there's not a strong desire from people overseas to have us there. Yes. There isn't. And, and it's just quite clear that there's not. Now that in itself is an indication that you 
are not removed from divine truth you are removing yourself mm -hmm. from divine truth from the personal engagement yes yeah. Yes, you do. Look, don't you think that if there was a lot high demand for us to go to places overseas that we would be going? Of course, we would be going to share yeah. divine truth. Whenever we feel there is a high demand of people to actually f have you know, truth in their lives and to want to practice truth in their lives in a sincere way, we, we want to be there. So it we is, would be there. It is very <laughs> rare that we are even invited that even one individual says, I would love for you to come to yes. my country. Yes, even one individual, let alone Very hundred or, yeah. or more. Yeah. Now we know there are thousands of people overseas listening to Divine Truth, mm -hmm. But it's very rare for us to see a thousand people or a hundred people even at a group that we set up overseas. And let's talk about this because Hanan is asking about um, how can I engage in divine truth and participate in divine truth? And this is one way. This is one way, but a lot of people <coughs> don't want that personal engagement with us because also in all of the other spheres of their life, they are hiding their interest in divine truth. Correct. They are hiding it. They're not even, they're not trying to practice the principles no. openly or publicly. No, they're ashamed. They're of, ashamed. They're of ashamed it. of it. Yeah. And, so, and a lot of it's because I'm saying I'm Jesus. Yeah. Like if I wasn't saying I'm Jesus, a lot of you wouldn't be ashamed. Mm -hmm. But you're ashamed because I'm saying I'm Jesus, which also happens to be true. But you're ashamed of that truth. Yeah. And, so, and so you don't want to have the personal engagement where you're saying to somebody, oh, there's a seminar this weekend in USA, in yeah. New York, where 200 people will be there and this guy's going to be Jesus and I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. You don't want to say that because you're too ashamed to even say, to acknowledge to people that you're yeah. practicing it or even interested in it. Yeah. And a lot of people don't even tell the truth. No. It, it's not even about mentioning Jesus or God. A lot of people <laughs> are simply afraid to tell the truth yeah. in all spheres of their life at all times. Correct. Uh, so you could be engaging divine truth if you told the truth yeah. in every area of your life all the time. Yeah. Like That's a, you, you would feel less removed from divine truth if you did that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. If you practice principles of like, honouring other people's free will, understanding your will, uh, d working through your addictions, working love, through your facade, growing issues things. of love and so forth and so forth, then your life wouldn't feel removed from divine truth. You wouldn't even feel removed from us here in Australia, to be honest, because yeah. you know, you'd, you'd know that you're on the same path and anybody who's on the same path never feels removed from other people that are on the same path. Yeah. So, so the whole concept of your removal of divine truth is self-imposed. Mm -hmm. You must understand this. And the majority of people overseas need to see this, that their removal from God's truth is self-imposed. Yeah. And it's because of fear. Yeah. There's huge amounts of fear. And the more Western your country is, probably the higher your fear is mm -hmm. because you've got more potentially to lose yeah. right that you think you want or need yeah. and as a result the there is a large amount of fear in people overseas and whereas here in Australia we'll often get 200 people along to a group and if, if we had a group 200 people there'd be a group 200 people if there's if there's an auditorium 300 generally we'll fill it mm -hmm. and the main reason why that is the case is because there are more people here that are less afraid and less ashamed yeah of actually acknowledging their their involvement even and passing even the, interest even a passing whatever. interest yeah. in divine yeah. truth yeah. and there was also less facade here generally yeah. Pe people here in australia um, are generally less in less facade than many more western developed countries yes. that have been western for a much longer period of time yes. you know we've, yeah. we've had a convict background um, so facade is not a huge issue. We've got other issues about emotions. We've got emotions. other issues. <laughs> yeah, Being a lot of other severe issues open. actually. <laughs> yeah, but a facade is not yes. a huge injury here. Yeah. Not uh, some other, as you mentioned, the USA and other European countries, facade is a very ingrained. H hugely ingrained. And valued and... Uh, it's a commodity that's, yeah. that's yeah. used in bartering systems even. In yeah. advertising, everything, everything. The, the whole economy, as you say, it's runs based on, on facade. facade. Yeah, anyway. a, a fake presentation of what's really happening. Yes. Yeah, and, and most people who live in those countries are also engaged in the same fakeness uh, as well. And that applies to you, the listener who's yes. in those countries. <laughs> and so rare. if you want to participate <laughs> in Divine Truth, you'd work on 
deconstructing that facade yes. in a very real, literal, day-to-day -day way. Yes. Yeah. Also, we must point out, there are people who are sincere overseas. There is a yeah. few people who are very sincere overseas yeah. who have participated for a long period of time, who have done a lot to help the growth of Divine Truth. Yes. And they don't feel removed from no. us or from Divine no. Truth. Yes. So my question is, why do you feel removed? Yeah. You feel removed because you're removing yourself. Yeah. You're not engaging the processes that we're suggesting fully, and you're also not engaging the principles of God's truth fully. Mm -hmm. you, you're picking it, as I've suggested, yeah. you're picking it, like Mary said, cherry picking it, yeah. is the stay, staying here in Australia, yeah. which is like, yeah, that's a nice cherry, I'll pick that one. Oh, that one's not a very nice one, I'll leave, leave that it. one. Yeah. And that one's a nice one, I'll pick that one. That one's a not, not a very nice one, I'll leave that one. And particularly, particularly when yeah. it comes to your personal truth, yeah. you're doing that it, in very large ways, yeah. where you completely ignore a whole heap of things. Your countries, in particularly Western countries here we're talking about now, your countries are heavily involved in addiction. Mm -hmm. You have large amounts of anger if your addictions do not get met, and, and you are in extremely poor condition from a soul perspective, mm -hmm. generally. Mm -hmm. This is country-wise. Yeah. Your soul condition is such that you support a government believing that its people are more superior than other people on the planet. Yeah. And this is a major soul-based injury and a cause of many wars mm -hmm. and preemptive strikes against other people. Yeah. It also is the cause of your justification of uh, what I would classify as um, financial manipulation of markets mm -hmm. and financial control of the world. Mm -hmm. and, and honestly, there are a lot of very dark motivations in these things which you need to be far more personally aware of mm -hmm. because they come from the individual people who within live in the country. The country. And, and a lot of people feel really attacked when we point that stuff out. Yeah. But to me, it's like us joking about our convict heritage. Yeah. It's a part of the multi-generational injuries that we've inherited. Yes. If we want to grow, it can all be eradicated. God, it can all be eradicated, and it's wonderful to look at these things, look around, and say, "Yeah, but it, see, it needs leaders in those countries to eradicate it out of themselves first. Yes, this yes, is, that's what I'm and, saying. And very few people we notice who have heard divine truth are becoming those leaders. If you just feel attacked when we point it out, then you're definitely not going to eradicate. You're not going to be a leader. Uh, and yeah. on top of that. What, what's going to happen? You become a leader. You're going to be the lone voice in the wilderness, as the mm -hmm. Bible saying goes, <laughs> um, saying a whole heap of truth that nobody around you generally wants to hear. You're yeah. probably going to get attacked. You don't want to be attacked because most of you are addicted to whatever the social norm is, yeah. right? And so you don't engage divine truth fully. You will not engage divine truth fully unless you're willing to see the importance of relationship with God, number one. Whatever happens in this relationship, is my primary concern. My relationship with every single person on this planet and in the spirit world is not as important as my relationship with God. Mm -hmm. if, if, if my relationship with God means that every single person on this planet is going to attack me, then so be it. Yeah. Right? That's the attitude we need to have. Most people overseas, particularly in Western cultures, are not able to have that attitude. Yeah. They're not able to. They are so constrained by the norm, mm -hmm. by following the crowd. Mm -hmm. they, they're just followers. They're not leaders, right? Mm -hmm. and, and what we need is if, if the world is going to change, and particularly the Western world is going to change, which is a large requirement. For the rest of the world to change. For the rest of the world we change. Because yeah. the Western world is the most oppressive part of the world. Yes. They are the people who, who take the most resources, mm -hmm. who use the most resources, who have the most emotional addictions. They are the most oppressive part of the world. Unless there are leaders in those parts of the world who wish to change and, are, and who have the courage to make a stand for their relationship with God first, above all other things, and their desire for truth and love above all things, then, then it's highly unlikely that, that there will be any major change on this planet. Yeah. Right? So, so people in the West, you have a large opportunity here to become a leader of change, mm -hmm. but only if you engage these humble principles of truth that we're sharing with you. And, and many of you are not because you are engaged only in your addictions of doing whatever the average person wants you to do, of fitting into the crowd, of, of not wanting to get ostracized or ridiculed or attacked. Mm -hmm. 
and avoiding all of those things at all costs. And these addictions are causing you to not engage divine truth. That's what's causing your removal mm. from divine truth. And you mentioned earlier about some people overseas who are actually not feeling removed, who are actually taking a lot of initiative. Yes. We mention Nikki often, but there yeah. are other people overseas who are giving talks. Yes, um, who, who are presenting things to people. Yep. Even though they're opening themselves up to ridicule and ostracism. Yep. They are having diverse degrees of success depending upon their own emotional injuries of what they need to work through. Yeah. And eventually those kind of people will become leaders in those particular countries with regard to the distribution of God's truth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But those kind of people are very few and far between. I've been teaching now for 10 years and there's two or three of those people in the UK. Mm -hmm. And I've, got, I've visited the UK now for eight years. Mm. Right. So... <laughs> You know, you've got to, like, I've been teaching Divine Truth for 10 years and there's probably, I could name on one or maybe two hands, the number of people who are truly engaging, sharing God's truth with others mm -hmm. in their life. Mm -hmm. So that's an indication that most people are still in terrible amount of fear, have a lot of shame related to the fact that they are interested in it. Mm -hmm. They still are not focused on their relationship with God no matter what the cost. And they still have many other addictions that they want met. Yeah. That's what removes you from God's truth. Yeah. It also has the effect of removing you from uh, contact with us because yeah. we are interested in the people who have the same amount of desire and courage that we have to share it. Yes. That's what we're interested yeah. in. So. And Hanan, um, yeah, I think Hanan's fairly new to yep. divine truth yep. teachings and, and I appreciate that she's written to us Yes, actually wonderful. a question that yeah. a lot of people because fail this to is, ask. there's people who have been listening for five ten years who've never, never asked these questions exactly mm -hmm. um, but within this Hanan you are asking us to tell you what to do which is something that we spoke about just in our previous session yes which is we can't tell you what to do no you, you need to engage your will we, pr we provide all these teachings um, so that people can begin to learn truths yeah and engage that in their personal life. And if we told you what to do, we'd be cult leaders. Yeah. And we're not. We're not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's move on with the second half. Sure. Um, also, most of the time I have no idea what my condition is. I agree. That is. The majority I, of people, by the way, don't. Don't, yeah. <laughs> and there is, an, there is an extreme benefit of having someone in a higher condition of love be able to... Um, assist you there is but but there are already surrounding each individual who learns divine truth your spirit friends who are in a higher condition of love who are trying to share things to you mm -hmm. there's god who who wants and deeply desires to give you her love so that you can understand what love is mm -hmm. and there's also god's also arranged for a lot of external help to be given to you which you're not availing yourself of yeah. so yeah. so you can't say you're alone yeah. because you're not yeah. and it and it really gets down to how humble you are in accepting what is it what what is being what is attempt you know what god and others are attempting to show you and god's laws in operation yeah, yeah and i haven't even mentioned god's laws the law yeah. of cause and effect the law of attraction the law of, of compensation, compensation the law of love the laws yeah. of love revolving repentance and forgiveness how these particular laws are also attempting to assist you to get into the appropriate condition so it's not like you you have exactly the same help that i have mm. exactly the same help like there is no you don't need my help right because you have exactly the same help that i have mm -hmm. but that the that, that being said i have not yet met anyone other than myself mm. who have yet has yet to receive has yet to progress towards god without receiving help from somebody yeah other than god yeah and and all of god's laws and the other things we've mentioned yeah yeah, yeah. and the reason why is because we're not humble enough to do mm -hmm. that Right, we've got to develop this quality of humility. Yeah. The quality of humility makes us soft mm -hmm. to God, makes us soft to receive to receiving what God's laws are telling us in the moment, makes us soft to hearing the quiet voice of mm -hmm. God and the quiet voices of our spirit friends who are who are gently suggesting in harmony with our free will what we need to do to grow in love. Mm -hmm. And and, and it, it's our humility that is the door to everything. Yeah. And, and what I notice is that, particularly in the Western world, humility is a scarce, scarce 
commodity. Yeah. And I wouldn't call it a commodity. It's actually an essential <laughs> resource, but <laughs> it's actually very, very scarce. Mm -hmm. And the majority of people we meet have very little of it initially mm -hmm. when we first meet them. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But it is a quality that is desperate, in desperate need of development mm. if you're ever going to make some sincere progress on the path. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So humility is very important. Yes. Hanan's asking about how she can know what her condition is. You've mentioned humility. If she has humility, she, yep. sorry, if she has humility, she'll be able to hear and see what God's already showing her. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. will. She won't need somebody else to tell her. I don't need you, Hanan to tell me. Mm -hmm. I don't because I can see what God's showing me, what's happening in my body, what's happening to my attractions, what my, my pain is. All of those things. You be if you the more sensitive you become to all of these things, the better it is because you, you see more. You see more of what's happening, what the problem is. You can what the problem is and and what the solutions are. Mm -hmm. You're open when you allow yourself to feel and you allow yourself to ponder and you allow yourself to imagine and you allow yourself to, to, to connect with God. You get lots of direction as to what you can do about these particular things. Mm. And so no one's ever alone whether it comes to any of these matters. Yeah. 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 Okay. So she, I'll just read the end of this paragraph sure. and there's a few other notes with the things we wanted to mention to her. Sure. She says, that is, am I in facade? Am I deluded in whatever progress I feel I've made? Are the challenges in my life an indication that I'm out of harmony or instances of spirit attack? Now, there's a whole series of questions there. Let's go through yeah. them one at a yeah. time, shall we? So, am I in facade? Well, yes, you most probably are um, in facade. The majority of people on the planet are in facade and until they work through their facade, um, they generally are. Are you truthful with every single person in your entire life? If you're not, then you're in for some kind of facade. Mm -hmm. Are you truthful with yourself at all times? If not, then you're in some kind of facade. Are you honest about every single thing you've done, even when those particular things would be damaging for other people to know? If not, you're in your facade. Yeah. So the majority of people when they answer those questions, would have to answer in the affirmative. Yes, they are in facade. And something that... Obviously facade, the, the varying degrees of facade. Yes, yes. Some people are... Intensely. Uh, <laughs> cement reinforced. Cement reinforced facade. Facade. <laughs> and other people, just in certain areas, they feel a bit shaky and they cover a few things over. Of course, yeah. Um, but basically what you're referring to, and it's something we wanted to mention to Hanan and others, is developing this quality of self-reflection, honest self-reflection, assessment of yourself in relation to how your life's going, what yeah. God's laws are telling you. Just those three questions that I asked very quickly yeah. off the top of my head. Yes. They're off the top of my head because I ask myself those three questions all, all the time. The time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like, so, so, of course, if you asked yourself those three questions all the time, then you would see mm. what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. But but if you don't ask yourself these questions, if you're not self-reflective, you, you won't ask yourself these, these questions. And that's why we feel part of your progression is learning how to be sincerely self-reflective. Yeah sincerely self-aware that's for everyone it's, it's everyone. a necessary part of yes. your progression yep. to to develop this desire yep. to reflect on yourself and to see yourself as you really are yep. that's a part of breaking down your facade it is yep. and it also is essential because it, from a logical perspective you can't fix anything you're not aware of yep. and or by the way you can't recognize the sin of anything you're not aware of and if you don't recognize and be aware become aware of the sin god's love which actually is forgiving of your sin cannot flow to you mm -hmm. so you can't enter a state of repentance without becoming aware mm -hmm. so everything that you do not want to be aware of is a problem to you and this is why we we can't stress enough you need to see what you're not seeing yeah right? and you need to want to know it and want to see it and there's plenty of people and all of God's laws around you and there's plenty of spirits around you and God, him, uh, God himself and all of God's laws trying to assist you to see but you're still not seeing. So, so that means that you're not sensitive. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be aware. Yeah. You know, th when you want to be aware, you will see. Yeah. And when you see, you'll become repentant. When you become repentant, you'll feel the flow of God's love in forgiveness. Yeah. You will. And that can't happen while you're in facade. Obviously, so yeah. dealing with the facade is important. It's important. Yeah. So, so it's very important to see where we're in facade, where we're not, what facades we create for different situations. 
most people have a facade for different situations you know there's a public facade a private persona mm -hmm. you know a persona when you're at work a persona when you're with the kids and so forth give up all your personas and be yourself but that's going to require dealing with a lot of fears that you're going to have to address to do that yeah, yeah. and let yourself go through those fears yes yeah okay. second point that she raised yeah am i deluded in whatever progress i feel i have made well, that depends. Are you deluded? I don't know. You've, <laughs> you've got, to, got to be you've honest. You've got to be responsible. Yeah. You've got to be self-aware and ask yeah. yourself. Yeah. Now, I'm sure there are some areas where you feel you've made progress and you've finished with something that you probably have barely begun. Mm -hmm. I remember at the beginning of my progression, well, after doing seven years of emotional work, this was, I went to somebody and they said, I have yet to begin the deconstruction of my facade. And I'd just been done, I'd just done seven years of emotional work. Yeah. Now, now, like, how do you think that felt? <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, at that time, uh, you know, it was only a few months later that I realised what this lady was talking about. She had been told from a spirit that that I was Jesus, and she knew that I didn't know I was, mm. and I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. At that time, so she tells me I haven't even begun. And she was right. <laughs> as soon as I realised who I was, I went through a lot more <laughs> after that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so the reality is that yes, the majority of us are in delusion about some things and not in delusion about others. But we are responsible to work out what that is. To work it out, <laughs> exactly. But there's a couple of other things I think are worth mentioning. There is that when you have made. Okay, number one, there's an addiction to feeling like you're progressing to avoid how you really feel inside yourself. I see that or in a lot of people. Or avoid your attractions, yeah. I've had a lot of that <coughs> addiction. You know, I just want to feel like I'm getting somewhere. Mm. It feels terrible to feel like I'm not. You know, I just, can someone please tell me I'm getting somewhere and I'm better than it was a year ago, a week ago, whatever. Yeah. Just to make me feel better. It's an addiction. Yeah. So that's the first thing so that people need to I don't have to cry about the fact that nothing's changed. Yeah. Which is my feeling of hopelessness being released. <laughs> yeah. I was pretty resistive to the feeling of hopelessness. Yeah. And that's what that was all about, avoiding. Yeah. The second thing is that when you do make actual progress, you're going to feel that you're different. Not only are you going to feel that you're different, your life will change immediately. Everyone around you will feel you're different yeah. and you will feel you're different. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's not like you, it's not like you can maintain a delusion about it no. because everything around you is showing you that things have changed yeah. for the better. Yeah. So you're obviously different. You're different. And people around you are telling you you're different. Yeah. <laughs> you've progressed. <laughs> and then you, of course, also can feel the differences within you where you don't respond to certain things that you used to before. You don't act in addiction where you used to before. You don't get scared where you used to before. You're softer where you used to be hard. Yes. You don't leap to anger where you used to. Used to, to get angry yeah, and so yeah, forth. All these kinds of and things. And this is telling you you've changed. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you accurately assess that, then you're not in delusion. But if you're not accurately assessing that, then you are. <laughs> 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 and the third thing I would say, so the first thing is beware of the addiction to just wanting to feel like you're progressing course, all the time yeah. and avoiding. Yep. The second thing is if you're making progress, you probably, well, you're going to know that you've changed. Not only the, you, 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 sorry. Everybody would going to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everybody would know. Your light shines. In the first century, I said, don't hide your light under a basket. Let your light shine. If you're truly making progress, your light will shine to other people. Your life will change. Other people will be attracted to you. They'll want to hear God's truth from you. Mm -hmm. You know, everything changes around you when you change. Yeah. Like, it's unavoidable. Yeah. That's how the attractions work. Yeah. Yeah. And the third thing is about another addiction, mm -hmm. which you kind of touched on earlier, which is to feel like, right, I'm progressing. I'm, you know, I'm in the, people ask, what sphere do you think I'm in? All this kind of stuff to feel like, it's similar to the first addiction. Yeah, if you've got to ask it, what sphere you're in, you're probably in the first or in yeah, the hills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just the emotion the driving you to ask is probably putting you there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and also... Um, Oh, just sorry. Lost my train of thought. That's <laughs> all right. You. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> I was thinking about something else all of a sudden. Um, um, progress. Oh, part of humility yeah. is recognizing that your soul might go through periods where you 
you you feel something really deeply about a thing. Yep. You think it's over, but then later there's some new aspect. As your soul a sensitivity expands again, yeah. you're going to find more and more and more that's there. Yes. The temptation is to feel like, oh, I'm done with that. People want things to be over. Yeah. And, and that's a lot about control, actually. Yeah. The reality is things will be over when you're at one with God. Then it'll be over. <laughs> yeah, you know, stop. you won't have to yep. feel any more pain anymore. Yeah. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but before then, you're going to have to feel some. Yeah. And usually the things that we feel last are the most painful. Mm. Um, that's because we weren't, our soul hadn't expanded in its sensitivity enough before then to feel them. Yeah. So, so it's usually the last things are the most painful, not the first things. Yeah. So a lot of people get, have one first big thing and they go, oh, that was really painful. I hope that's all over. Yeah. No, things are going to get more painful because the reality is that you're holding on to those things more deeply mm -hmm. and therefore you are more resistive to release of them. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when you go through the release of them, you'll probably feel as more painful. You said something really important last night. You said that people often want they measure their progress through having a sense of emotional stability. Yeah. But when you're on an emotional path, that's not a good there measure. There is no emotional stability. You, you don't aim for emotional stability. You, you aim to be... Continually growing. Continually emotional. Continually expanding continu emotionally. Yeah. Continually overwhelmed. Yeah. 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 And you're not trying to manufacture that stuff. No. Because some people have fallen into that trap, which oh, is very much many that facade. fall into that yeah. trap. Yeah. No, you don't want to manufacture no. the state. You will become overwhelmed. You will become more emotionally sensitive. So measuring stability as emotional stability is not always the best way to gauge whether you're growing. You will go through periods of instability emotionally mm -hmm. because there are a lot of very unstable emotions inside of you that have yeah. to come out and be experienced. Yeah. You're going to have to go through the experience. Humility will allow you to go through the experience. Most of you will want to shut that experience down particularly mm. initially. And while we receive so much judgment from the world around us, and particularly, again, in Western societies, there's a huge amount of judgment about emotion, mm. right? Everyone's trying to shut you down. Yeah. <laughs> you have a little tiny, Not just in you have a little tiny tear one. roll down yeah. your face and the yeah. average person in the West goes, what's wrong, what's wrong, yeah, oh, yeah. can I do something about yeah. it? You yeah. know, as if you're having a major disaster. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so yes, you, you know, there's going to be a lot of external resistance to you going through this very emotional process. Mm. But if you go through the process, you will become very emotionally stable. Yeah. And once you become at one with God, you are always emotionally stable. And yeah. stable to you means extremely blissful and happy all the time. <laughs> so you, we kind of go through this, okay, we start out very numb, very shut down, very, yeah. and then we have to and go And we think through, that's stable. That's stable and that's kind of contentment. We're aiming to maintain that. Yeah. But really, as we develop humility, we're going to go, we through, go through this. And it'll get bigger and bigger and bigger. We go through this wavy process, which yeah. people would associate with a breakdown emotionally. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We go through this wavy process, you know, and it's not like we're losing our mind. We're actually, uh, what happens if you do it properly? Yeah. And if you do it without addiction and without facade and without spirit influence yeah. you actually go through a very sincere process of becoming more and more and more emotionally real mm -hmm. more and more and more honest and truthful with your environment and yourself and as a result of that you get through this like turmoil tumultuous stage mm -hmm. and then you know obviously you get to your resistive emotions then so mm -hmm. you might go through periods of time where you're quite stable but you know you're not growing right and then all of a sudden you have a breakthrough into that emotion you're resisting and then you have a period of instability again and then you get over that period through the emotion and then you become even more stable but now you're in a higher position of growth and and so forth until you become at one with god yeah yeah and the very last emotion you deal with will probably be your most painful yeah yeah that's yeah. how it's going to probably work yeah. because it's the emotion that's the most deeply buried the most difficult thing, the thing that's affected your life in the most major ways. Mm -hmm. And so it's probably the last or last group of emotions you're going to address. Mm. Yeah. And what you've just described is through progression, we're <coughs> gradually giving up control, we're giving up numbness, we're giving up detunement. We're addictions, gi addictions. Facade. So the more... Dishonesty. The way we can assess our progress is not through, oh, everything's under control, I'm feeling kind of normal and... Yeah. Uh, no. We just had someone visit us today, didn't they? And they were feeling like, no, the last year's been really great. When actually they've just had all of their addictions met in a very kind of sedate way. It's really way. funny. We had someone yesterday phone us who said, I'm going terribly. I'm really bad. Yeah. It's going yeah. bad. I'm, I'm going really bad. And I said, no, you're not. 
you're going really good actually this is yeah. this is a really good place where you're at yeah. you know the night before she had this big emotional upheaval thing that went on for an hour she was so distressed by it that she thought she's doing terribly and she's going yeah. bad and it's really yeah. bad it's all a disaster yeah. and she was actually doing quite well and then we today yeah. like you say someone came and said no i'm going really great i feel like my relationship with god is really blossoming when actually when we examined it all of her fears are being avoided. She's got total control. Her addictions her are being met. All of her addictions are being met. So she feels relaxed. And she's getting a nice feeling yep. from spirits who are yep. loving her addictions getting met. Yep. And she feels nice and relaxed because everything's going smooth. And so she, she, and then when you asked her, but what are your major issues? She listed them mm. all off yes. because she knows them well. She's yeah. known us for a long time. She said, oh, yeah, I've got that desire for approval and I've got my fear of financial ruin or mm. lack or whatever yeah. and a couple of other things. She revealed them off and we said, well, how, how have those things changed? Oh, no, no they, they haven't, haven't changed. changed. To her own admission. Yeah. She knew all of that and yet she felt things were going really well. Yeah. Not that, a good that's measure of progress. self delusion. That's someone frank. who doesn't live overseas who is being deluded about yes. their progression. And we yeah. said such a thing. Yeah. 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 She received yeah. about 20 trees in the space of 15 <laughs> minutes and felt quite stressed afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we hope that she yeah. allows herself to work through some of that. Yeah. 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 It's interesting. What we notice is people build up to a point where they become almost unstable. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we say unstable, we should probably use the correct term. They're almost to the point where they're going to feel some pretty big emotion. Where their addictions are going to be solidly challenged. challenged. And they and have what the do opportunity. They, do? they run for any change in their lifestyle or in relationship or <laughs> Anything that would feed the addiction to get me back under control. Find the addiction, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and all that years of work getting to that point yeah. is yeah. all gone. Hearing truth, trying to take it in, okay, practicing something different, yeah. trying to be sensitive, what is really going on underneath this, all of this, people work towards it, work towards it. It just starts to get real. Yeah. And they want to go straight back. Yeah. 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 You've got to really want your relationship with God. Yeah. And it's got to be your number one priority. Yeah. Above all other relationships, even the relationship with your family, children, whatever. Yeah. God, the God relationship has to be your number one priority if you want to do this. Yeah. And if you do this, you will end up in an extremely blissful and happy state in the end. But you're going to go through a lot of emotional turmoil because there's a lot of unhealed, unloving emotion that exists within you. And there's a lot of pain that comes from the law of compensation that's now inside of you that needs to be released. Mm. And that can only be released. You can do it the long way with the law of compensation or you can do it the short way with repentance which is developing the awareness of the sin. Mm -hmm. But the majority of people don't even want to be aware of their sin, yeah. let alone do anything about it yep. or become repentant for it. Yep. So that's a problem. Yeah. And this is why we're so direct now. We're trying to help everybody. Trying to help everybody. See, yep. you know, this is a sin, this is a sin. Become aware of the sin. You've yep. got a hope if you become aware of the sin. That's the hope. Yep. If you don't become aware of the sin and you remain in a state of denial of your sin, you have no hope when it comes to your relationship with God anymore. Mm. You've just cut off all hope there. Yeah. You're going to have to do it the natural love way if yeah. you do that. Yeah. And we're suggesting to you that's a very long, painful process. Yeah. Right? There's lots of people who engage it, but it's a very long, painful process. This short, very intense, quickly painful process is the painful process of going through seeing your own sin, becoming aware of it, feeling the, the rep repentance for it. Mm -hmm. Go through that process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You'll benefit immensely from going mm. through that process. Mm. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Are the challenges in my life an indication that I am out of harmony or instances of spirit attack? Both. Why well, can't both be true? Both. You are under spirit influence. You have been, as she points out later yeah. in her yeah. letter to us, at times obsessed even or possessed yeah, by spirits and then at other times you know, influenced. just influ all the time influenced. Yeah. Everybody is. Yeah. While you have addictions and while you have unhealed emotions, you are going to be influenced. The key is to get rid of them so you're no longer influenced. Mm -hmm. but, but it's both. It's both the fact that, yes, there are times when you are completely in self-delusion and you don't have any idea what's going on mm -hmm. and you're totally, you know, unaware. And then there are other times when you're just getting spirit influence. Mm. Now, even the spirit influence is a result of things that you're unaware of inside of yourself. Yeah. yeah. And also Hanan saying like, how do I discern 
how do I um, analyze the external events in order to give me an idea of their progression? And I see a lot of people kind of doing this. They're applying what they hear about the laws mm -hmm. or what, um, say the law of attraction, for example, mm -hmm. and they apply it from an analytical perspective. Mm -hmm. But unless there's a desire to really be sensitive and honest about the real emotions inside of you, you're just as likely to misapply, the, for example, yeah, just, no we idea. just had an, ex uh, an example just now where we were filming something about someone who's really got some dark, evil intentions towards other people. Mm -hmm. And someone watching... We finished and they said, oh my gosh, that's part of my law of attraction. I must be like that. When no. in fact, um, the truth is, no, they're just someone who's open to that kind of treatment. manipulation and treatment. Mm. And so this is where we have to be quite honest and real about ourselves. And if there's mishaps in our lives, feel our heart. Am I really... You've got to remember, you've got... Th there's a lot going on around us, yeah. honestly. You know, there's spirits around us trying to manipulate us. This is why the prayer, the, the, prayer, the pageant message prayer, yeah. and it's something I that we're going to yeah. talk a bit more about. Did you bring it with, yeah. babe? Yeah, because yeah, the pageant message prayer identifies most of your problems mm. that you're going to face. Yeah. And obviously one of the most severe problems you're going to face is the amount of temptation through your own appetites and addictions that mm -hmm. you receive and sp the, how that attracts spirits who who want to use those appetites and desires of the flesh against mm. you mm -hmm. so that they destroy you yep. or destroy your faith or even get you in their condition of the hells. Like mm -hmm. there are a lot of people in the hells who only want to make everybody else get into the same place of the hells that they are. Yeah. Th yeah. That's all their desire is at the moment. Their very yeah. evil desires yeah. are to destroy as many people as possible. Mm. Just so just like they've been destroyed by somebody else. Mm. And and the prayer is quite clear about that if you read the section of yes, it. Yes, because yeah. um, Hanan's asking, you know, am I under spirit attack? I've been over Yes, you are. Everybody on the bone path is. Everybody yeah. on this planet is under yeah. spirit attack to various degrees. Of course, the more you're engaging your addictions, the less attack there will be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because you're getting, you're doing more of what the spirits want you to do, so they're going to attack you less. Their reward for you yeah. to do what they want is. Oh, we'll attack you less. Yeah. And if you don't do what they want, they They'll attack you more. more. <laughs> That's exactly. how they work. The same as how any other bully works. <laughs> yeah. So I'll just read the section in the prayer sure. that you're referring to. It sure. Says, Keep me in the shadow of your love every hour and moment of my life. Help me to overcome all the temptations of the flesh and the influence of the powers of the evil ones who so constantly surround me and endeavour to turn my thoughts away from you toward the pleasures and allurements of this world. Yeah, quite clear. It's quite clear. The reason why we're often distracted from God's truth is because we have our own individual temptations, appetites and desires, what, what I'm calling your emotional injuries, mm -hmm. to be more specific. Yeah. Those particular emotional injuries cause an attraction between you and spirits. Spirits know what those emotional injuries are they tempt you with them. Mm -hmm. They purposefully try to manipulate you away from a course of ethics, morality, love and truth. Yeah. They do. They purposely want to destroy your character. Mm -hmm. Don't believe that there are not people who don't want to destroy you, because there are. There's a lot of people who want to destroy you. Mm -hmm. And you will need to have some kind of protection from those people, particularly mm. initially. Mm. There's spirits around you who are trying to protect you, but they can only work with your will. Yeah. So this is why at the beginning of that sentence, we're asking God to supply us this protective yep. power, and that's the exercise of our will. Yep. You know, Obviously, we can't ask for such a thing and then go out into a place that's got all of our temptations. <laughs> yep, and you know, say, we need to take some personal action that is expression of our will. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So um, for Hanan then, she's aware that spirits are around her, that she's had heavy influence in the past. Yes. The prayer is she something... She will continue to have until she's worked through many of these emotional injuries. Yep. That's a given. Yep. We need protection from it, so we ask our spirit friends to protect us yep. while we're working through the issues, but they can only protect us while we're sincere while we're about sincere. working through the issue. While our heart is really engaged, that will is really engaged mm -hmm. to work through the issue, mm -hmm. which requires faith on our part. Yes, it does. Faith that actually working through it is going to lead to something better, yep. and that's another aspect faith of the Faith in prayer. God's goodness. Yep. Faith in a lot of things, actually. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, final mm -hmm. question from sure. Janine. <clears throat> Is there a way I can more accurately assess myself on all of the above, so mm -hmm. everything she's asked, and keep myself on track? Well, I feel God's already given you the way to accurately assess yourself. Is your life happy? Have you attracted your soulmate into your life? Have you, um, you know, ha are, are, you, have you re are you relatively secure in terms of you've got enough to eat, you've got enough to drink, mm. you've got enough to put on? Mm -hmm. um, are you, do, you, do you engage truth every single moment of every single day of, of your entire life? Do you, do, are you acting in a loving way every single moment of every single day of your entire life? And there's also all of God's laws that are giving you feedback about the truth about those particular things. And the key for you is to be aware, mm. to become aware mm -hmm. that all of these things are coming at you, telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. so. so it's developing the self-reflection, so the honesty for what's <coughs> really inside of our heart. And then... Um, using the the various attractions whether or not we're receiving god's love all of these things to help us then assess how we're progressing mm -hmm. and the evidence is going to be in our life in the life we have yes yeah also am i taking like real action to share my you know myself and also the truth with others not in a demanding or a bossy way, mm -hmm. but, but am I taking all of the opportunities that come up to me? You know, for example, opportunities that just are, are very small, like, oh, you know, you, you realise that somebody gave you some change, you know, and it was too much change. Do you go back and give it back? And you say, mm -hmm. look, I can't accept this. You gave me too much change. Mm -hmm. Or in the past where you're dishonest with an insurance company or, or something else, and now you've corrected that. Or... You know, what actions are you taking to correct your past behaviour, unloving behaviour? And I, I feel how much am I, am I completely self-involved in my own life? Life. And how much are you helping how much am, do, am I serving other people? I, I notice yeah. a lot in the West that there's a huge level of self-involvement and the world, so-called world's problems are only given any consideration when they trigger a personal fear within yeah. And then you've got the additional issues of how much are my addictions getting met? How much technology am I having to use every day? If I can, if I, can I even do one day without technology? Yeah. Can I even do that? Can I do one day without drugs? One day without alcohol? <laughs> you know, one day without meat? One day, yeah. you know, these are all indications of whether we're progressing or not. Yeah. If, and if you can't do your whole life without them and, and not even miss them, then yeah. it's indication that you're still in a condition of unlovingness inside of yourself. There's, a, there's emotions driving you to unloving behaviour that are part of your addictive nature. And you need to remove these animal appetites mm -hmm. that don't d need to be within you mm -hmm. from yourself in order to become more a loving individual. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to see your sin? Are you willing to address your sin? These are questions that you can constantly ask yourself. Yeah. I feel that if a person can't accurately see themselves, it's got nothing to do with how much help they've received. It's got everything to do with their personal unwillingness to see themselves. Mm. It is. Yeah. And, and that's a d desire we have to develop internally because I've been with you for however many years now, seven years, and I've watched you give feedback to people, the mm -hmm. same feedback. <laughs> often. Often, time and time and time again. Yep. And some of those people have taken on board some. what you said. Some have taken a while to some, the penny most to drop. Most take years. Yeah. Yep. And others still do not have any desire. Complete to denial to feel the truth of anything that they ask the question but when the answer comes it doesn't reach it's them. not the answer they want to have yeah they want you to say something different mm. yeah and that's the trouble with we ask for feedback but the reality what we want is a whole different thing said to us yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're not really interested in feedback are we no well what yeah. we're interested in not truthful feedback what we're interested in is somebody feeding my addiction or feeding my desire to think that I'm a great person and isn't it good that I've done all this progress or whatever it is. Yeah. We often want a whole heap of things that we're not admitting to ourselves mm -hmm. we want. Mm -hmm. and, and I also feel, you know, this, the theme of this discussion really is one of taking, how do I take more personal responsibility to become more aware? Mm. And, and the answer is 
Well, if you're not already aware, then it's not got anything to do with something I can say to you. Mm -hmm. It's got everything to do with your uh, uh, lack of desire to be personally aware. Yeah. Work on that. Yeah. Work on developing your will to become ultimately aware. In fact, what I would suggest to you is you work on your will so much to become aware that you become more aware than any other person on this planet about yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're the only person who can say that in the affirmative. Yeah, well, like I, I'm completely uh, like I'm completely aware of the majority of my, you know, things that I still need to work through <laughs> and so forth. And and the things I'm not aware of, nobody else is aware of either. No. <laughs> so they, they can't help me anyway. The reality is if you can develop this this desire for personal awareness, and you can develop it in such a way that you know it's a key part of humility and a key mm. part of becoming at one with God. It's also a key part of your recognition of sin. Mm. Without awareness, you will not recognise your own sin. Mm. If you can't recognise your own sin, you can't repent for it. If you can't repent for it, you can't receive God's love. So, yeah. so it's dependent upon your personal awareness, your personal awakening of your own soul. Concentrate your effort on becoming personally awake, mm. personally aware. Make sure you're more aware of your own misgivings, for, misfortunes, <laughs> misapplications um, of, of love, that you're aware of your own um, faults. Yep. More than any other person on this planet is aware of them. Yep. You know, usually we do the opposite. Yep. Usually we walk around in a state of total, like, what would you call blindness? Yeah. with regard to our own faults, but we're totally okay about pointing out everybody else's. Yeah. And this relates to an illustration I gave in the first century about the rafter. I said, first remove the rafter from your own eye so that you can see the straw in your brother's eye. Mm. In other words, the majority of people are so focused on other people that they can they, they think the other person has all these problems mm -hmm. when they themselves have a mountain of problems mm -hmm. that they are yet to address. Yeah. My suggestion to you is focus first on your own problems. It's particularly important in a relationship because in a relationship, most of the time, we focus first on the other person's problems. Yeah. Right? Because we want our addictions met, we want them to conform to us. And, and I'm saying, no, develop personal awareness to such a point that you are the most aware person on this planet about yourself. Mm. Mm -hmm. right? If you do that, you will pro continue progress towards God. Yep. Right? You will also not need Jesus or anyone else to tell you what you're already aware of. Yeah. You will only need them to tell you things that you're unaware of. Yep. Right? Yep. And, and if you are the most aware person on this planet, no one else on this planet will be be able to tell you anything about what you're not aware of because you're already aware of it, right? Yeah. And and so from a logical perspective, the only people after that that can help you is God. Yeah. And your guides who are already in a condition of a healed condition. And would you say that once we've developed this feeling of awareness, so that we're a personal expert on our injuries and our personality, yes. even like yep. the things we love, the things that are true about that us, desires, the things that are errors passions, about us, those all everything. those things. Once we've really developed that, we're going to be way more sensitive to what God wants to tell us. Of course. Because there's no barriers up to the truth anymore, is no, there? No, we, we, we don't like, hold on to our own opinion anymore. Yeah. We're not addicted yeah. to believing our own opinion is right yeah. anymore. Yeah. We're only interested in what is God's opinion here. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing we become interested in. Mm -hmm. and, and so, we, you know, we might have personal ideas, mm -hmm. but we don't keep them firmly within ourselves yeah. because humility demands and requires that God's opinions will always supersede our own. Yeah. Right. And, and, and also obviously God's opinions are always more truthful than our own. Yeah. So that makes sense to allow God's opinions to supersede our own. Yeah. And we're willing to give up things as soon as we're de it's demonstrated to us that it's illogical or unloving or untruthful yeah. where we give them up. Yeah. Most of you are not doing that. Most of you are holding on for dear life, all of your addictions. You're not willing to give them up. Mm -hmm. uh, a person who's truly humble just gives them up yeah. because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. And so many of us hold on to this idea, a personal opinion about ourselves mm. 
that, you know, we're invested. We're totally invested in believing yep. this is how I am. This is what makes me good. This is what makes me bad. This is what, even what makes us bad, sometimes we're, in, we're invested in that opinion, aren't yes. we? Yes, yeah, we want yeah. to believe we're bad, even. Yeah. There, are, yeah. there are things in our childhood that cause us to want to believe we're bad, and we're addicted to holding on to these things. Sometimes, like I said to a couple recently, God has a far better opinion of you now than what you have, that, that what you have, and you believe God's opinion of you before was good, yeah. right? when it was actually less yeah. so. Because before they were being bad parents, now they're trying to be good parents. Mm -hmm. before they're acknowledging, they're acknowledging how bad that they were bad gotten, parents and yeah. they, repented, they repented for those feelings. So, so well, even if they're not fully repentant not, yet, they but, want to change They're engaging it. the pro process of awakening. They're willing to see the truth about it. Whereas before, yes. when they were really bad parents, they didn't want to see the truth. And so mm -hmm. God's opinion was lesser yeah. than when they now start to say, yeah. I want to know what So they're feeling wrong. bad about themselves because they recognize their sin. Yeah. And God's feeling better about them because yeah. they're recognizing their yeah. sin. <laughs> exactly the same reason yeah. <laughs> that God's feeling better and they're feeling worse. Yeah. And I'm saying, well, no, God's opinion is that you're now in a better place, mm -hmm. not in a worse place. Now that you see what you've done, you're in a better place. It's awesome, hey? Yeah, it's an awesome thing. And, and isn't it wonderful that God loves humility because mm -hmm. it allows us to admit our mistakes. He, God, the fact that God loves humility draws us into repentance. Yeah. Like, and, and therefore draws forgiveness from God. It's actually a natural process if we're humble enough to go through it. Mm -hmm. It's a natural process. It's wonderful. Mm. Um, but we resist and we control and mm. we're into anger and control and resistance and addictions and whatever else, doing all we can to, <laughs> to avoid the natural process that God created for our healing, yeah. which is repentance and forgiveness, really. Yep. That's the real process that's the process revolving around god's love mm -hmm. and the other processes are all what we're going to have to do if we don't want that yep, yep. Mm. so what we'd recommend to hanan hanan is is that she thinks about the things that we've said we've said a lot of different things here yeah she thinks about this things we said but in particular thinks about this one aspect and that is allow yourself to become more self-aware mm. allow yourself to see what you're attracting. Allow yourself to hear God and hear the spirits around you rather than keep blocking it, rather than believing you've dealt with things when you haven't. Yeah. You know, allow yourself to see your addictions. Your spirit friends want to show you what every one of them are mm -hmm. because they want you to be at one with God. They want you to be as blissfully happily, happy as they are. Mm -hmm. but, but to do that, you're going to have to become aware of your sin. Mm. And they want to help you do that. That's what we want to help you do. That's what they want to help you do. And you will have more involvement with divine truth when you develop that desire much more strongly. Mm. And collectively, overseas, as a group of people, you will see more of us when you collectively have a desire to see more of us. Yeah. When you collectively have a desire for more truth, that's when you'll see more of us. Mm. It won't be because people here in Australia have given you the gift that you don't appreciate. Yeah. It will be because you want that, not because other people want it for you. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And, that, and we'd like to encourage our brothers and sisters overseas yeah. to, to develop a strong desire to do that, mm. right? And develop a strong desire to grow, to see and recognize the error that's within and to, to deconstruct release deconstruct this facade, this idea of yep. holding on to the idea of who you want to be. believe yourself to be. Yeah, rather yep. than just facing the way it is right now. Yeah. Yep. And the same applies in Australia. You'll notice here in Australia we've done very little public things for the last year. Why is that? Because the same problem is here now where people do not want to see their sin. Mm -hmm. So they don't want to see Mary and Jesus. Mm -mm. <laughs> which is okay because <laughs> when you see us you're probably going to start seeing some of your sin right and we're going to respond to your desire so if you don't want to see us you're not going to see us <laughs> we're not going to force, force ourselves. ourselves upon you yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so if you would like to get more personal assistance from divine with divine truth then my suggestion is you need to develop a far stronger personal desire for truth in your life mm -hmm. and a far stronger de development of your sense of humility and a far stronger desire to see the sin that you engage every single day of your life. Yeah. Yep. 
once that happens, you will find your progress speeds up. You're no longer stagnant and you'll probably see more of Jesus and Mary. Yep. Because we love people who do that. We absolutely love it. Mm. It's a joy. Yeah. 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 Yep. All right, Hanan. Well, I hope I got the pronunciation of your name right. <laughs> yeah. And we hope that that was helpful for yes. you today. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thanks, Hanan. <laughs>